Well, he's no astronaut. In fact, he's never even stepped foot inside a spacecraft. But for nearly 20 years, he's been regarded as a key player in NASA's space program. Tony Hutchinson, a self-taught entrepreneur, has been quietly plugging away behind the scenes, ensuring the lines of communication between Houston and the International Space Station are always kept open. And as Vassal Melandris discovered, he does it all from his backyard, right here in SA. This is Mission Control Houston coming up uh, in about a minute. We'll be joining the uh, conversation taking place uh, between ham radio operators, in this case, uh, Tony Hutchinson in uh, South Australia, who will be initiating a call uh, to the International Space Station. This is VK-5 Zulu Alpha India. We're a long way away from Houston, Texas, aren't we? Yes, basically the opposite side of the world. When Houston has a problem, Tony Hutchison is listening and ready for action. Tony, I'll, um, I'll uh, hand it over to you. If Calling NA1SS, NA1SS. This is VK5 Zulu Alpha India, VK5 ZAI in Kingston, South Australia. Calling uh, uh, anyone copy, go. Every day, Tony checks in to Mission Control from his own communications hub in Kingston in the southeast, built entirely from scratch out of cast-off gizmos. But don't let appearances fool you. Tony is one of the elite Aris group of nine amateur radio operators entrusted by NASA to come to the rescue if their signal to space goes down. We had a small emergency um, on the docking of the Progress uh, supply rocket. They obviously rang up and said, uh, can, you, can you go and stand by? And, uh, That's amazing, isn't it, that NASA's own antennas failed and you were called in to rescue communications? Yes. And what started as a hobby quickly became an all-consuming passion. Are you very busy tonight? Yeah, look, if, can I uh, leave that with you? Yep. And bring it in to me? I've got okay. a couple of uh, things to do and yeah. another school coming on. All right, hope okay. everything goes all right. The International Space Station, it's been tracked all around the world and you can see it on a colour computer um, in his, just in his what looks like his lounge room. I think his wife's been kicked out of the lounge room. <laughs> yeah. Border Watch journalist Chris Oldfield has been tracking the Quiet Achievers movements for some time. Tony Hutchison, he grew up on a farm near Bordertown and he was about 10 when he used to pull the radio apart but then he got into amateur radio and from amateur radio he became involved in different um, space schemes and he was the one who kept um, Andy Thomas in contact with his family and they became quite good friends. How are you getting on? Oh, uh, are you quite used to it? He was responsible for yes, that's the way uh, on more than one occasion for linking me up with Andrew uh, from the front lawn. <laughs> and uh, talking face to face as he passed over. Adrian Thomas, father of the famous Adelaide astronaut, says he owes a debt of gratitude to Tony, who always managed to keep the phone lines open during his son's voyages through space. I'm very glad to have had it. It would have been very different if I was just sitting here on my own with no link at all to what was happening. When a fire broke out on the Russian space station Mir, it wasn't NASA's communications, but Tony's, providing the much-needed reassurance to the Thomas family that Andy was in no danger. It's something I don't, wouldn't like to do, go through again, and I really must say that uh, the uh, help of uh, Tony Hudson was absolutely uh, wonderful. With the uh, space station and uh, everything else... You don't These days, the 68-year-old is supposed to be retired. And considering he's been repeatedly knocked back by the state and federal governments for any financial support, Tony can barely afford to keep up with ongoing costs. I estimate it costs, costs me personally about four to $5,000 a year. Who covers the electricity bill? Um, I do. <laughs> 
<laughs> but nothing can stop this space ace from doing what he loves. And lately he devotes much of his spare time in the classroom, offering South Aussie students a rare chance to talk to astronauts on board the International Space Station. That must give them a real buzz. It does. It's um, any school in the world can apply. Uh, it's a waiting list at the moment, unfortunately, of uh, around 18 months uh, because it's so popular. Uh, it's only a matter of filling out an application. Andy Thomas may yet have a part to play in NASA's next major project, a base on the moon. And you can be sure Tony will be facilitating wherever possible. Fancy a trip to the moon yourself? That's a long way. <laughs> I think I'd be in it. Yeah, I've, I've experienced most things in life and, uh, uh, yeah, if the chance came up, I think I'd be there. He may be unrecognised and largely unsung, but Tony Hutchison's efforts have certainly not gone unnoticed by NASA, treating him, just like his astronaut friends, as a bit of a hero. I got a, um, an award from NASA the other day for uh, the engineering work that I've put in over the, over the years, which I, I had no idea was coming, but uh, it was quite, an ex uh, quite a thrill. Does it make you proud to think, you know, you played this pivotal role in connecting so many people? Um, yeah, I, I suppose, yes. Um, Any regrets? No, no, no regrets at all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've shared a moment of history. Amateur radio station VK5ZAI in Australia, operated by Tony Hutchison, contacted Barbara Morgan, KD5VNP, aboard the International Space Station. VK5DJ in the group, VK5ZAI.